What's been a challenge is trying to get everybody at one time in the room, which I'm sure it's going to be most everybody's topic, but trying to get everybody there uh, at the same time. Some days it works out really well, you know, if we're not as busy, which isn't good. But uh, days that it's really busy, it's a challenge to uh, get everybody in the room at one time. That's what Excellent. What questions do we have for him? I'm kind of interested in the what you were talking about, the door dings and all that stuff. Is that just for you to load up your back end? Or? We load up all our product um, up front, and we have our sales, our finance team got together with all the salespeople. They already, they all knew about it, but they're, we're really presenting that up front now. Uh, so you're just lining up your, your uh, our basic four items is on every new car deal, um, and they know it's the sales people know it's going to be there, uh, the customers know up front it's going to be there, and um, our numbers. We were running seven, eight hundred dollars a car range, and now I think we're right around the month we implemented that. We jumped to about twelve fifty. Gotcha. Next month we got to fourteen hundred. This month I think we're right around eleven fifty. So it's definitely, I mean, it's added hundreds of dollars to it. And it's not just the sales guys doing it. We have our finance team. We brought our finance team out to, uh, if they're not working deals, uh, they've been told, you know, if you're not working, if you're not signing a deal or, you know, doing funding plays <coughs> or whatever it is you guys do, you're out front. So there's no more for them hiding in the back, which they don't, the guys we have, they really don't do that anyway, but they like to be out front because they're all of our, they were our best salespeople. So they're out front. Uh, that's a 100% rule Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's, they're just, they're out there. And they're part of the, the closers. They're, tra if there's nothing going on, they're training. Uh, so, and the sales team is, instead of being a battle back and forth where it's not my job, that doesn't happen anymore. Because if they need help, it's a cash deal, and we know they're not buying anything, finance guy is going to be just as happy to come out and help do credit apps, help deliver a car. My finance guy came out the other day, delivered a car for us. It was a cash deal, made nothing on it. Actually, it was a lease deal, made 300 bucks on it. Still came out, helped deliver the car to the customer. So it's just, it doesn't matter whose job it is, we're all helping each other. What about used cars? Do you do the same thing on used cars? Used cars, um, we'll still do wheel tire, and then service contract on every single used car. Our service contract penetrations jumped up. I'd say the the biggest thing, we were, we were in the low 30s, and now we've been close to in, in the 40 range. Uh, the biggest thing that's happened is um, we were about 740 bucks ish per service contract, and I believe now we're about 1400 So, so we go out every, every car we go out with 2000 bucks in it, and I print off the sheet um, with uh, PwC. We've implemented that as well, so every you guys use that to check your, most of the time finance guys do that, but I have it on my screen. I, I pull out the service contract. Um, and I print the how much time it is. I, the cost is obviously on there as well, but I highlight, I print the box that says expires on this this many miles this day, and I highlight that, and I don't touch any other part, and that goes as the second sheet, just like you guys would use a killer blue So that's in there, and you're fully protected, and they come out, and the customer says, what does that mean? And they'll, I'm glad you asked. Here's what it means. Your car is going to be protected for until this date and this time, and that's on every single pencil. So I think that's the biggest thing I took from this is how to improve the back end. As gross as I mean, we still do a decent job of front end with that career. We're a little bit lucky there. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of opportunity. I mean, it's, it was very eye-opening. First, I talked with you on the, the second day, I think it was, both you guys. Yeah. And I went back, and I put, a, put the four items in there and a service contract. First presentation, Becky Burr went out, and she was freaking out. Um, she, she's one of our best salespeople, went out there, and went through it, you know, basically circle and sign the payment works best for you, and it's fully protected and went over each item. Okay. And they knew what they were getting, wasn't, you know, hiding in there. They knew everything because it's on the get ready, it's on the presentation. Her first two deals went down that way. And then Ray, the third person, did it, his went with all of it. And in my head, I'm like, what the heck? How much money have I left out there? Because, I, you know, I was, our finance team does a good job with it, and we like to be very transparent out there and accurate, but uh, I think it was really eye-opening. So now it's on every one, and if I don't, if I get working three or four deals and one of the, I don't put it on there, the sales people are actually asking for it now, which is good. They're like, oh, no, we forgot, you know, the door game, so it's... Now when you say you train at 1 o'clock, is that Monday through Friday, and how long is Thursday. it? It's Monday through usually, Thursday? It's usually 25 minutes. What type of topics do you talk about? Um, we talk about... Um, when we first started off, it was phones. We went through mm -hmm. phone scripts. Uh, the next week, or that whole month, we went Great. through phones. Um, and then it was meet and greet. 
and then we've gone into right now the biggest thing at our store is trying to get transition from demos to write-ups. Great. So that's this week's topic, and we'll probably continue for a few more weeks. Yeah. What I like is I'm a fan of less content, more reps. Yeah. It sounds like you have a theme for the week, yeah. and then it, sometimes yeah. for the month, sometimes which is great. Depends, yeah. It's awesome. Uh, after leaving the last training, we had the last uh, corporate meeting we had was trying to get our average salesperson up to 10 cars. We're only averaging 7.7 .7 per salesperson right now, which isn't great. So baby steps to nine and then getting to 10 cars. So that's, uh, that's the goal right now. Our, we can see that our trying to get them onto papers mm -hmm. is huge for us. With the, uh, the big change in the, the back end and the way that you're presenting it, um, <clears throat> did you have to separately spend a week training the salespeople to do that? Or was that something that the F&I managers did when they were out on the floor? They were out on the floor. And, I mean, it, we started, they all knew. All the salespeople knew about it. We've always talked about it. Mm -hmm. But it was just implemented. It's going to happen. You're going to go out with this. And if you don't know what it, how to present it, you need to ask myself or you need to ask Rich and James if you don't feel comfortable. And some of them were like, no, we got this. And other ones were like, okay. Next thing you know, they're back in the finance department and they were training. Mm -hmm. So I've got, I've got James LaFleur and Rich, and they're really good people. They're good with other people. They have no, no problem jumping in and training and teaching. So it's just ongoing, mm -hmm. and they'll grab them. I, I'll just all of a sudden look back, and Gordon will be back there with you know, James, and they're working on it. So it's something that's ongoing. It doesn't have to even be a set time. So there was one, uh, recently I had a conversation with one of our other stores that expressed a little bit of concern about having their finance managers spend time out on the floor if they're not with a customer, closing deals and working with customers, just because then when the deal goes down, you have this finance manager that might be potentially closing a deal and actively working with a customer, and then the awkwardness of disengaging them that, that is acting as a closer now to go handle the paperwork and the other on finance the managers. Yeah, and so, or on different customers. Just in general, there was a fear at one of our stores that if they involve their finance managers more on the floor, closing deals and working with customers, that then you would end up with a, a hold up of getting the next customer into finance if somebody, so have you experienced that? And no, I mean, we don't do a huge volume, but even if we did more, um, if it comes down to myself or Joe having to load a car deal up, or if the other finance person has to jump in and load it up or assign the other person's deal, we don't, I mean, our team's pretty good. They don't, no, hasn't been an issue. It's actually better if they, if they're out there and they even help close it and they go back, they can still sell more product too. It doesn't become an issue at all. I haven't have had, customers like it. I've actually found that they don't, they were getting more upset if they were presented the product in the back than out front. They're like, I wish I'd known about this up front. Have you ever ran into, because sometimes we present accessories up front before the deal's done and the customer will, you know, pick your payment, but then they'll say, well, we want all that stuff in there, but we, I can't for that payment. So yeah. is it costing yourself a little bit on some deals? Or? Um, no, what, what, what we're doing is, so the customer says, um, I'm not sure about those products, and what we're, we are trained to say is, you know, which, which one of these items would you want to remove? And so we're at least, sometimes we have a customer that can't, you can't fit it all in if the credit is you know, challenged or, but they'll usually say, I don't want the clear mask, but I want those other items. And what I've actually found is when we're working those car deals, um, you, know, you have a grinding customer with just trying to, you know, price, 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 all of a sudden won't buy the car unless they have those two items. So they're, they're off the price now. And they're like, no, I want those two items. And they're not even grinding the price of those. It's actually taking them away from the price of the car. If they're cash deals, cash buyers, you know, you have no, you can't work, you know, payments for them. And you're able to say, you know, keep, keep that, leave the price where it's at, and also like, no, I want, I want those two items, and they focus on that. And I've had other people where they, they wanted the items, like you said. I can think of one particular deal was on a lease. We took the two items off. She just was, you know, she couldn't said she, you know, just wanted this payment. And then afterwards, she's like, what were those two items? Again? I mean, how much were those two items again? I really want those items that you, you told me I should have, and paid extra for them. You know, check for the difference. So it, it's only helped. I would. I thought the exact same way. I was really concerned about it and fought it for a little while. And I just, just one day after I left the training, implemented it. And I, I'm three. The first three deals, service contracts, and all four products. And I just kicked myself. I thought in my head, how much, you know, how much of this cost me before? And I thought, okay, maybe it's just the first day where I'm excited. And it's continued. And Jack, you know, came down and. <coughs> went over some similar stuff with him. It's, it's, I think I came down to your 
We did on a Friday meeting, to respect, yes. and then one of the first deals. Yeah, um, full full deal. Yeah. So, as scary, I mean, it seems like it would screw things up. It doesn't. Customers want to know up front what's going on. They want to be able to do the paperwork, make it quick and easier. CSI hasn't dropped. If anything, we've probably gone up a little bit. <clears throat> Haven't had any of those surveys where you know finance took way too long. Those, I haven't had one of those in the last three weeks or three months. Kind of follow this up. What Cardone did when we first switched over to that, you know, the EMI thing. Mm -hmm. The more they see us, the more yeah. they are yeah. not fearful of us. Mm -hmm. The more they accept our position. Yeah. Usually, it's the process goes smoother by being involved early. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Jim Brown, he's a guy that wants everybody greeted early. Doesn't matter if they're in service parts, sales. Doesn't matter which department you're in. Want to introduce yourself? We don't hide. We're our you know, show is pretty forward. Everybody gets involved. It only makes it easier. To meet us up front and meet finance up front. It makes it a lot easier. All right. One more minute. Any other questions? I'd like to add that uh, Cameron's team is in the Acura world is number one in the country for accessories per new vehicle retail. Wow. Oh, it has wow. been for a long time. So nice. they do a really good job at that too. So what is your what, what do you do? What how, how, do you have a process with your accessory? Yeah, this I mean, we have our sheet that goes out. Um, it goes out on every new car deal for sure. Okay, it's got every option that Acura offers. You see it? This one, this uh, particular one is for the MDX. So basically, you're having your pencil. You present them, and then once they do, you present them that sheet so they yeah. can pick what they want. And then after the sale's done, yeah. every single time they have to go through the items. You know, if, the, if they don't pick any of the other, like the, everybody has body side moldings, running boards, roof sure. racks, rails. So salesperson will have their two or three that they like a lot. And each salesperson is different. One of my guys is body side moldings and rails. Yeah. Sean Freeman, he'll be like, you know, they'll buy body sides and roof rails. That's what I would do on my car. He has an MDX, he has body side moldings and roof rails on his. And you guys are going to be able to get copies of that? Yeah, so and you've got, yeah. you got electronic yeah. copies of this too? Yeah. Okay. Here, I'll run it off. Well, and, and I'll make sure that everybody gets and electronic that copies that of this. has to be signed by the salesperson and the customer. Proving that it's been That's a great idea. Yeah. And it goes out, even, even if they say no to the products up front, it goes out again. And then they offer body side moldings and racks and things like that. And it's in every car deal. You can look for a deal. So I don't know. I, you know, if we're all trying to do it, and you've been number one for such a long time, it seems, seems like it'd be something pretty easy to implement. We yeah. we we do something different, but I kind of like that idea. I'm gonna see if I can get some more information on that. It's just uh, we'll get you copies. Thank you. Give me a hand, okay? Yeah, sure.